Hi guys, back with a, another tutorial. In this one we are going to be covering the coins that I showed you in the Niflheim dev vlog. Uh, they're going to have a slightly different uh, texture to them because I'm not going to give you guys the Nordic thing because that's very situational. Not everybody's going to want that. So instead I'm just going to have a coin that's just got this really basic uh, dollar symbol on it. Um, because that's more generic and more of you can use that in in a project than than say the Nordic stuffs. So we're going to be starting by creating our material. So let's right click material. We're going to call this coin underscore M. We're going to head on in and we're going to hold three and left click for a three vector. And now our colors, we're going to want 0 0.44 in red, 0.3 in green and 0.12 in blue. And that will give us this really nice kind of bronzy color when i say bronze it's more of a mustard but that will look better when we add in some more stuff so hold one and left click and we'll do that twice for two one uh for two uh constants we're going to plug the first into metallic the second into roughness and we're going to set the metallic to be one and the roughness to be zero and we'll get this nice gold color going on so there we go. Now if you don't want this to be quite so shiny, we can change the roughness. So if we put this to 0 0.2, we'll get it slightly uh, slightly less reflective and it, it looks a little bit nicer as we've got a little bit of roughness on the surface. So I'm going to use that for now. Next thing we're going to use is a texture that I'm going to provide to you guys. So make sure to download this. I'm going to put it in my Google Drive. Uh, I know a few of you were having trouble downloading from Google Drive, but it's because you were signed into more than one Google account at the time. If you're signed into more than one Google account uh, when you go into Drive or you've got two drives active at the same time, it won't let you download because it's going to confuse the folders. Uh, so make sure that you're only in one Google Drive at the time. And if you still can't get that to work, if you load it from a incognito tab, it will definitely download. Now, one second. I was losing my voice there. Oh my gosh. Right. So we're going to plug this normal map into the normal. And now we've got this uh, boink. We've got this dollar sign and just some really basic ridges. It's going to look more like a chocolate coin at this rate, but that's okay. I think I might, might bump this up a little bit. So what we're going to do to bump this up is we're going to multiply this. And what we're going to do is hold three and left click. We'll plug this into the B, the normal into the A. And then the different colors, we're actually going to say two red, two green, and only one blue. And what this is going to do is it's going to take each of the channels from our texture and it's going to multiply them by the values here. So red is going to be multiplied by two, green by two, and blue by one. Now you, you don't ever really want to multiply the blue because if you multiply the blue, you're not going to see the difference on the other channels. So if we change these channels, you see the blue here is just black and white. And then it's the the green and the red channels that hold all the angular data. Okay, so you don't really want to change the blue. So we're going to plug this into normal. And now that should be a little bit more pronounced. Yeah, there we go. You see that's a, that's a lot more blobby now. Woohoo. Cool. So I'm going to apply that. And this is going to be our material. We're going to open up the static mesh. This is something else that I'm going to give you guys. This is just a, a cylinder with a really basic unwrap. Um, but it will suit for what we're doing. It's got no material slots, so we're just going to assign a material slot. And then inside this material slot, we're going to say coin underscore M. And I got a little coin on there, yay! So we've got a little, a little dollar, and we've got the nice ridges around the edge. You can see there. Probably needs a bit of a better unwrap, but you know, quick stuff. So here we go. Uh, feel free to do as you wish with this. Um, because, you know, we'll save that and that will save this uh, material to this mesh. We're going to right click particle system. We're going to call this coins underscore P. Now we're going to open this up. Losing my voice again. Damn. We're going to right click and then type data. We're going to say new mesh data. Inside the mesh data, we're going to change the particle cube to our coin, which is coin underscore SM. And now these are. These are pretty big. Now you'll notice that they haven't got any material to these. And the reason why is because here we have to tick this override material. Boink. And then, well actually, that's going to give it the wrong material. It's just because it hadn't 
uh, compiled. But if for whatever reason you don't have your material or you don't assign it to the mesh, if you override material and then you go to required, you can go to the material here and you can assign your correct material there. So what's the next thing that we're going to do? Uh, inside the required, we're actually going to say emitter loops one. We only want this to loop once. So it will say completed once they've all died out. Inside of spawn, we're going to take away the constant 20 and inside burst, we're going to add an element and the count is going to be 20. It's going to burst 20 of these coins and that's all it's going to do. The lifetime is going to be five seconds. So we can actually change the, the float uniform to a float constant and that will just give us a single value. Um, my voice is really going today. I clearly talk too much. Their initial size, uh, we're going to change this down to a vector constant, and we're actually going to, just going to set these to a, a scale of one because we don't want these to be uh, a massive. So you can see these are now flying off, doing their thing. Don't quite see where they are. Here they are. They're in there. We so you can see them just about. So. The velocity now is what we're going to change, and we are going to set these to 50, 50, 500, and then in their minimums, minus 50, minus 50, and then 425. And now this is really going to fling these into the sky, so if we were to quickly save that and pull some coins into the level, oop, there they go. We now they're, they're flying quite high, but this is okay. We're going to change this. The color of life, we can delete that because we're not using any color of life. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to go to acceleration, constant acceleration, and in the Z, we're going to give them minus 500. And what this is going to do is it's going to make sure that they fall. So you can see that they bounce or they fly up and then they fall back down again. Yay! We'll head into the particle system once more. We're going to go to collision, actor collision. And now in here, under the dampening factor, we're going to give these some dampening, which is going to add some some drag and allow these to bounce a little. So the dampening is going to be 5, 5, 0 0.8, and then negative 5, negative 5, 0. Now we're going to scroll down to max collisions. We're going to open this up. And we're going to set a maximum of 2, but a minimum of 1. And that should be that. So we'll save those. We'll restart that. And now they should be able to bounce a little. And you can see that some of them do and some of them don't. That's fine. But now they also have collision, so they're actually going to uh, they're going to die. We so they're no longer going to fall through the floor. We shouldn't actually see any fall through the floor if we go underneath. They should disappear, and they do good. So those are working as intended. We'll open this back up. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to go to rotation initial mesh rotation and we're just going to leave that as the default which will be 111000 we're going to right click go to rotation rate initial rotation rate uh, initial re mesh rotation rate we have to make sure that we rotate on three axes and we're going to set this to 012002 and now if we save and we just go into the level and we press to restart you can see the way that these coins are now getting this nice randomized rotation Yay! And bouncing around. You see that the normal map on them is giving them quite this nice little capture on their on their shadowing. So you can see that there's a normal in there. You can't really see what it is, but they they look really cool. Doing cool. So that's that for the for the particle system. That is the the system that I currently have in the Niflheim game. We so they just bounce out. What I have them doing in the game is I have them assigned to a key press um, when you're within a certain area. So I'm just going to show you guys quickly how to make these spawn on a key press. Uh, so let's see. This is from a previous tutorial. We just get rid of that real quick. I'm going to say if we press, we'll say left mouse. Oh, I'll get caps lock on. Looks aggressive. Spawn emitter attached. Get player character. Oh, plug. Oh, no, we're going to say spawn emitter application. Actually, can we get the. Uh, no, we'll get world location of the mesh. 
actually. No, we should get the location of the whatchamacallit. That's right, the whatchamacallit. Get world location of the capsule component. So that's what's determining where we are. And we're going to change this to coins. Did I not call it coins? I did, there it is. So now, if we run around and I left click in the game, we should be able to spawn coins. There we go. Ooh. Now they're just flying out the top of his head. But that shows you guys how you can you can have these spawn at a specific location. So we coins. <laughs> Hopefully that helps you guys um, and it's something that you can use in your projects. It's quite a cool little effect. You could have a big coin that rotates and when you collect the big coin, these little ones pop out. Boing. Boing. In fact, let's quickly do that now. Let's go that extra step. Right click blueprint class coins underscore BP. And what we're going to do is we're going to go into here. We'll add a component, a static mesh. We'll find our coin. Coin. Static mesh coin. We'll raise it up a little bit off the floor. We're actually going to rotate its roll. And it's your. So we can see that there's the dollar symbol on there. And then it's going to be. Oh, well, actually, let's get rid of its. There you go. So we only want to rotate it to your for now. And then it's going to be the red, which is roll, that we're going to rotate for the uh, animation. We're actually just going to scale this up, though. I'm going to scale this to maybe five. It might be a bit big. Let's see how that looks in the world. Ah, that's okay. So we'll place that there. We'll go back into the blueprint. We'll add a component. Box collision. And we will just quickly... Come on, give me the box, give me the box, give me the box. We'll move the box up. We will scale it a little bit. In fact, we don't want it to be, don't want it to be too big. And there we go. We'll go into the event graph. Delete all this. No, we won't keep the event begin play. Event begin play. We want to get the static mesh. We're going to timeline. Add a timeline. We will open the timeline up. We will add a float track. And we're going to say three. We'll, we'll change the length to three. We will right click, add a new key, and we'll set this to zero, zero. Right click again. Uh, we'll put 1.5, which is halfway, and we'll set this to 1. In fact, we want to put that at 3, because this is going to be fine. So 3, and then 1, and that'll be fine. We'll close it down, and what we're going to do from here is we're going to drag off the static mesh, set rotation, oops, set relative rotation, and then we're going to Lerp rotator, plug the track into the alpha, and then the correct axis is red, which is X. So X 360, plug this into the new rotation, we'll say the timeline to update, we'll open the timeline again, tick loop, head back to the event graph, and that will do it. So what this is going to do is the track is going from 0 to 1. 0 is going to be 0, 0, 0, and 1 is going to be 360 Y, Z. So it's going to, as this approaches 1, it's going to rotate from here towards here. Which is exactly what we need for this to spin. So if we go, if we press play now, I've selected the wrong axis. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? I think I've, because I've said relative for all of them, world. world. Rotation. B boink boink. No, again. Tell you what. So we're setting set relative rotation, and I think it's because I put this in the wrong thing. I actually want this to be said. <laughs> there we go. 
Oh, no. Come on, you cheek. Oh. Of course. Um, because we've already got this set to minus 90. That's why it was doing the thing. So we're going to leave this at minus 90 in the Y. Minus 90 in the Y. Because we already had to rotate it to put it into position. 360 in the X. That should be what I want. He says. Optimistically. Yay. Now it's spinning. As you'd expect it to. It's a bit thin, so I might actually uh, increase its Z. Oh yeah, I didn't scale the Z. Derp. There you go, now I've scaled the Z. So that's the right size. Now we're going to go back to the event graph, and we're going to say box, right click this, add event, and begin overlap. We are going to say other uh, other actor drag from this cast to third person character so we make sure that this only reacts with our character and then we will say spawn emitter at location and we're going to try and choose our coin uh, so coins spawn emitter at location and then the location is going to be the static meshes world location get world location we'll do that and then at the end of this we will say destroy destroy actor and we'll leave that to self and now if we were to touch this it should whoop, there we go pop into little coins there we are so a little bit more than I was going to show you guys how to do but that's that's okay you guys love it when I give you extra stuff right tee hee hee Bling. Cool. So I hope that's been useful for you guys and some of you guys are going to find that uh, fun to use or find a place for that kind of thing in your project. Um, feel free to use your own textures or to change the material or uh, get your own, or make your own mesh rather um, so that you can you can customize this the way that you want to. As I say, this is something I've just thrown together in like literally three minutes. Uh, so I haven't put any care into this texture at all <laughs> because Tee -hee. Um, well, I'm just not going to use that, so yeah. Anyway, I'll see you guys next time.